Good morning, Good. friends, and welcome to New Garden Friends Meeting. Good morning, Margaret. It is our practice to extend a wide and warm welcome to everyone who joins us for Meeting for Worship. You are welcome here among friends, no matter your age or race, no matter your sexual orientation or your gender identity. You are welcome here among friends, no matter your abilities or your politics or where you may be on your faith journey, you are welcome here among friends. No matter your immigration status, no matter what was your first language that you spoke, you are welcome here at New Garden Friends Meeting. We are so delighted that you are here with us for worship. Friends, I have a reading to share with you all this morning. I'm reading this morning from the Gospel of John. If all of you, if any of you worshiped with us last weekend uh, on Easter, this is the next part of the Easter story. I'm reading John chapter 20, verses 19 through 29, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples met were locked for fear, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced and knew that they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the spirit has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, the one who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them that day when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, unless I see the marks of the nails on his hands and put my finger on the marks of the nails and my hand on his side, I will not believe. A week later... His disciples were once again gathered in that house. This time, Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them again and said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, my Lord, my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Our reading for today is from the final chapter of the Easter story. Jesus has risen from the dead and returns to his disciples before ascending to heaven. When he returns, he empowers his disciples to continue with his ministry of peace, mercy, and justice. He reminds them that they are filled with the Holy Spirit that they are fully equipped to partner with God to do the work of love in the world. This is all powerful stuff, but within this story is also the story of doubting Thomas, a story that is ultimately about encouraging us towards hope. Thomas is not with the other disciples when Jesus returns to the group. 
He does not initially believe that they have seen Jesus. He does not believe in the message of the Holy Spirit equipping them to do the work of Jesus's ministry. And his doubt is understandable. People do not usually come back from the dead. I am filled with sympathy for Thomas. For those of you who were at worship this past weekend on Easter, you know that we celebrated together the full scope of what the Easter story means. We held together the truth that the Easter story is a story about the power of empire being overcome. It's a story about God's justice and liberation coming into the world. We talked about how the Easter message is a message about how seemingly impossibly love wins over hate. Peace prevails over violence. Empires can fall, justice can reign. The Easter story is a promise a promise that the victory belongs to love, a promise that a better world is possible. Thomas is filled with doubt, not just about Jesus coming back to life, but also about all of that, all of what the resurrection means. It's easy to understand how Thomas feels. It's easy to be pessimistic and cynical. I know that I'm guilty of this. Why should we believe that things will change when we have seen so little evidence that things will change? I don't know about all of you, but the systems of oppression in our world often feel far too great, far too entrenched to be overcome. Overcoming those systems of oppression in our world, that feels as impossible as someone coming back to life. And that's the point, because it is impossible. The Easter story is an impossible story, encouraging us towards impossible hope. Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Think about those words in the context of the first part of the passage, the part where Jesus tells his disciples that they are filled with the Holy Spirit, that they are fully equipped to continue Jesus's ministry in the world that they can continue to be partners with God, partners in the work of mercy, love, and peace. This passage is telling us that we have the light within, the Holy Spirit within us, that we have that connection to the divine and that it is our work to partner with the divine, to build justice and mercy and love in our world. And that may seem impossible, but blessed are you who have not seen and yet have come to believe. As I was preparing my message for this first day, I kept thinking, how can we be a people who have come to believe? 
how can we cultivate that kind of fearless hope? How can we build that kind of wild optimism, even in the face of fear and prejudice and hate and violence? How can we be a people filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the will to help tear down systems of oppression, no matter how mighty or entrenched they might be? I am still filled with doubt some days. Or really, I guess I should say that I'm filled with doubt part of every day. And that is okay. This passage is not suggesting that we should unquestionably follow religious teachings or promises of our faith tradition. In fact, this passage really has nothing to do with organized religion at all. It has everything to do with liberation. It has everything to do with being hopeful, hopeful about the power of love. It has everything to do with being optimistic that a better world is possible and that we are capable of living in harmony with the living presence. We are called to be hopeful about living lives that are connected to the divine, the divine which we know is throughout all creation, the divine that we know is constantly coaxing us towards love and goodness. This passage is not about religious orthodoxy. It's not telling us that we have to sign on the dotted line around some sort of religious doctrine. Instead, it is about keeping our minds and our hearts open to impossible love, to transformative love that transformative love that is constantly bursting through in our broken and sorrowful world. So today, as we read again this story about doubting Thomas, my encouragement to you is to think about times when you have been surprised or even astonished by acts of love or justice in our world. When were you doubting that goodness could grow and impossibly goodness did grow? When were your doubts proven wrong about another person or about acts within an institution? What were times when you acted with love, even though the world expected you to act out of a place of fear? When was a time that you were brave, even though the world had taught you to be afraid? In what ways have you transformed in your life transformed to be more merciful, more loving, to live a life that was more profoundly connected to the living presence? What have been the tiny signs within your life that the divine is at work in our world? We are all Thomas. We are all filled with doubt and with fear sometimes. But today, just as Thomas's doubt turned to wild hope, 
may our hearts too be moved towards optimism. Blessed are those who can believe even though they have not seen. Friends today, let us have faith in the beauty of the divine that is all around us. Friends, today let us have hearts that are brave enough to believe once again that love will have the victory.